Mark Scar on the Scar Card on 103.7 The Fox. Proud to welcome in Michael Daybar. Michael, hello. Welcome. Thank you so much. It's so nice to talk to you again. My goodness me, we've spoken a lot, haven't we, over the years? Yes, sir. This is uh, your third go-around on the Fox, and we're proud to have you back. How interesting. I ha- I've also had three wives. <laughs> I don't know if there's any significance there. Hmm. But, Coincidence? Hmm. I think not. <laughs> <laughs> no, I believe in love. So how are you? I'm doing fantastic. How are you? Uh, Excellent, man. I, well, I've, you know, I always say every day, I'm, I'm never better, you know, because that's just the way I'm programmed of late. And, it, you know, I feel fantastic, man. I'm so lucky you know, to be doing this. I was speaking with my wife uh, last night, and I realized that I've been singing for 50 years. Mm. Amazing. You know, I've been on that stage for 50 years. And that's a lot of lot of rocking and rolling, you know. And I, you know, began in this musical. I did a musical in like 69 or something like that, late 60s in London. I was a teenager. And I played this androgynous rock star. <laughs> what a shock. And, and I've been doing that, for, you know, from that day to this. And along with killing people on TV, too, but, right. you know, uh, <laughs> but essentially, I've been seeing it all those years. I'm so lucky. For sure. I want to talk about a few things going on now, and then maybe we'll go back in the time machine. But uh, this new single, Anarchy in the UK, just came out on Wicked Cool Records, of course, with Little Steven. And when I played it the first time, Michael, I was it wasn't what I ex- expected, but it's become an earworm. I woke up in the middle of the night, Michael, with your version of Anarchy in the UK stuck in my head. So that's a good thing. My deepest condolences. <laughs> <laughs> it's unbelievable, man. You know, we, we, we cut the, the other song, Where Did All the Lovers Go, which I wrote um, for Genia, Raven, brilliant, you know, duet. And we thought that this was fantastic. And we were on the phone and, and, and Stephen said, well, what are we going to do the other side? And and, um, and he came up with the idea of this and, and doing it with an orchestra. It, it's really worked. People have really responded to it, I think, because it's it's sort of um, you know embracing the idea that it's a warning more than an angry you know Leiden who I love and of course was in a band with Steve Jones from mm-hmm. the Sex Pistols for two or three years and is a good friend but it was you know it's it's a baroque uh, drama and and it is a warning given the circumstances we're under. Has Steve heard it? Oh yeah! Oh God! I have to get uh, <laughs> the blessing of the, the you know, those guys. Yeah, for sure. Cool. So that's out now, and a, a nice pick there. And about a year ago, you released uh, a forty-five of you with the mistakes, crackle and hiss. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's the band that I love to go out and play with, you know, because I still like to go out there and play these clubs. It's I always have all my life, no matter what was going on. Even during the power station, I was out playing, you know, MC5 and Iggy songs when they were carousing around in their suites in the hotel, you know. <laughs> the boys and there's the Taylor Brothers, who I adore to this day. But, yeah, I, always, I like it because it's almost like a workout for me to get up there with a bad PA and sing my ass off. So let's talk about the mistakes. Who's in it? And uh, I know you guys play around Hollywood and L.A. And as you mentioned, and uh, it's just hot and sweaty. The West sweaty. Coast. We play, you know, hot little clubs in the West Coast. Uh, Lauren Molinaire on guitar from J- Detroit's incredible punk band, The Dogs. Um, Paul Little on bass has played with everybody from Gaga to Courtney Love and back again. Um, and that's a hell of a journey. And Linda Perry, you know, he was the bass player with Linda Perry's artists, all of her artists. Uh, Eric Himmel on guitar, brilliant guitar player. And Matt Starr on drums, who is now Ace Freely's drummer mm-hmm. and uh, an amazing, powerful drama so it's very loud and you know our, our motto is we're very loud and we make lots of mistakes <laughs> so, which is a definition of rock and roll or at least it's my definition of rock and roll so then uh, obviously that's where the name came from it's one of those happy accidents well i mean you know or miserable accident i, I mean <laughs> yeah it, it, it's just what i'm trying to say is it, it, relax Take it easy. You, what is perfection? It's got nothing. Technique has nothing to do with music for me. 
It's only about feel. It's not about technique. You can have a 17-year-old who just learn how to play ukulele and be moved. You know, it's nonsense. Um, all of you young musicians out there, enjoy yourselves, be yourselves. Don't copy anybody and say what you want to say and have fun and be kind and cool and courageous and fuck all of the rest of it. You know, mistakes are good. All of the greatest things in my life I've learned from a mistake, not from something that I've done that was excellent. We're talking to Michael DeBar and speaking of mistakes, an EP is forthcoming on July 10th. It is. It is. It's going to come out. It's live. It was our second show. And, uh, you know, uh, the club said that the sound check, uh, this is sounding particularly good. Can we record it? And uh, yeah, we did. And, um, and we're putting it out. <laughs> this is the second show we ever did. And it's really good. It's on Golden Robot Records uh, in con- collaboration with Die Laughing Records, which are punk labels. And um, I'm very exciting about it because my documentary comes out the same day, so the, the, which is called Who Do You Want Me To Be, which was the hook line in my song Obsession, which was pretty successful. So we're putting that out on July 10th together, the EP, live EP, which is songs from my past and the documentary. All right, let's segue into the documentary about how long has it been uh, percolating and what can we expect when we see it? Decadent, disgusting behavior and eight years. Wow. To be, um, you know, precise about it. I mean, it's, a, it's, a, it's an incredible story, you know, um, and I can't wait for people to see it. I was in, you know, I was born into this family, which was extremely dysfunctional. My father was a, you know, a titled guy, a marquis, an aristocratic French guy, um, and my mother was a singer, shall we say. And I didn't know them, you know. I was, um, my father was put in jail for embezzlement and fraud, and my mother was schizophrenic. So I never knew them. And I was raised in a boarding school because, you know, um, in those days you could put down uh, a student uh, when they were one years old. And I went to my father's school, actually. So my education had been paid for, and that was 8 to 16. And then when I left that school at 16, I, I, I did this movie called To Sell With Love. And that started my career. So it's a pretty extraordinary journey. Uh, I'm amazed that I'm still on the planet, you know. Talking with Michael DeBar, and uh, who's I, who came to you with the initial idea to say, hey, Michael, uh, would you be up for this? I was doing a TV show. I can't remember which one. But one of the writers of the show, Josh Weinstein, um, approached me. We got along really well for the few days that, uh, you know, the beginning of this series. I can't remember which show, but we we became quite close and had a similar sort of sensibility to rock and roll and show business. Um, and he said, you know, I really want to make a movie. Uh, I, I've never made a documentary before, and I really would love to explore your vibe, you know. And and he did. And, and over the next eight years, we compiled uh, all of these different um, lives I've led um, up until Stephen Ben Zant's um, offered to be on Little Stephen's Underground Garage, which I've been doing now for six years. So it, it's, you know, it's a hell of a ride, man. And it's a very positive thing, you know that I survived and I didn't die, you know, because I was a junkie and I didn't die. You know, I got sober in 81. So it's a, it, it's a tale, a beautiful tale, an interesting tale, a loving tale, and I can't wait for people to see it. I'm glad you brought up sobriety, almost 39 years. That's uh, congratulations. Yeah. Thank you very much. 25 years for me. Oh, boy, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so happy when I hear that because, you know, almost, I would say 80% of the people that I began this journey with are dead. Hmm. It's only the drugs or unhappiness, a sense of that they didn't achieve anything or the ones that did achieve lots who didn't feel they deserved it. It works both ways. Let's talk about... Uh the the Murdoch character. Uh, a lot of people obviously know you from that. Uh, I'm sure that uh, you know the whole MacGyver thing. Uh, let, let's talk about how that all started. 
Well, we finished the tour um, with Power Station. I was, uh, you know, replaced the great Robert Palmer in the Power Station, which was a spin-off from Duran Duran, mm-hmm. and uh, an amazing experience. And after that, I I made a record, um, and the label collapsed as the week it came out. You know, it's one of those famous rock horror stories. Right. What happened was I said, okay, what am I going to do? So my agent called and says, okay, so there's a one-off bad guy role in this series called MacGyver. It's very successful. The first season, CBS, fantastic. Go in there and um, and let's see if we can get you on the show. So I, at the time, I had this beautiful vintage white Rolls Royce because, I, you know, I just had a obsession. I'd just done this multi-million dollar tour with those boys. And I drove on the Paramount lot in this uh, the white roller, cigarette, black leather, I drove past the office, the three producers outside saw me, and literally I got the job as the car went by. You know what I mean? Because it was just such a fabulous image. I went in, I didn't read, they said, do you want to do it? I said, yes, I did it. Went up to Vancouver, shot the first episode where I'm in drag and I kill everybody, but not the guy I really want to kill, you know? Mm-hmm. And I did the, the show for the next five years, off and on. Yeah, and it was supposed to be a one-off. Yeah, and people dug it, you know, and, and um, letters came into CBS saying, you know, that's good. Can we see him again? And they did, and it was a, a fantastic experience. I'm so grateful to Henry Winkler, especially, who was the producer of the show. He's a terrific man, great man. Talking with Michael DeBar, uh, let's talk about working with Little Steven. Um, yeah. Obviously, you, you talked about for six, I can't believe it's been six years already since you've been doing Underground Garage, but that is in fact the case. And then he uh, was instrumental in working on this new single for you. Uh, what is it like working with somebody like yourself who's a lifelong rocker and uh, has so many fingers in the pie? Where the one, all of us, you, me, and everybody listening, that you meet somebody who you genuinely respect. It's a rare thing. Most of the time, you're trying to get by, um, and you and you, you know, you're in charge of your own life, um, and sometimes to the detriment. When I met Stephen Van Zandt, it was unequivocally obvious that he he knew something I didn't about life and about um, how to express yourself in a pure way, in an authentic way, and both as an actor and as a person and as a musician. So trust became the key word. I wasn't searching for anything, you know. We would arrive at what was the right the right thing to do, and the right thing to do is how you feel, you know. Do you, again, it's the feeling of music. It's not the expertise of music. Same thing with painting or acting or whatever it is, you know. Um, we are, the truth, and this guy I respect more than anybody else that I've ever worked with in any arena. Uh, Stephen Benzett would be that guy. On top of which, here's a man who is getting instruments into schools for kids because of Trump's, um, you know, severing of the, the, the arts in schools, uh, which is a whole other discussion, which we probably don't want to have. Um, and also, uh, Little um, Kids Rock did the instruments and teachrock.org, which is a website that teaches teachers how to teach music. So, hypothetically, you're dealing with Sam Cooke. Well, okay, Sam Cooke. So then you go to civil rights, and you and you build knowledge um, for youngins to understand through music what's happening in this world of ours. And we need that. We need that not that knowledge. So he's somehow managed to meld music um, and education, uh, which I'm absolutely down with, you know. And we do concerts for kids, and we raise money for this, raise money for that, and so on. So it's a long way from three core decadence. Make sense? Absolutely, 100%. Um, when's the last time you talked to Jimmy Page? Um, you know, he's a very reclusive man. Um, we communicate usually through lawyers mm. <laughs> you know, mm. or friends. Um, and I, I love Jimmy. I always will. 
I mean, uh, it's a long, long relationship, which he's a private man, and I don't wish to really discuss in public. Um, I adore him. He's done such an amazing job recreating and remastering and, and keeping Led Zeppelin's mythology alive, and is, for me, one of the greatest uh, producers of all time. If you listen to those records, you listen to that first record, that is one of the greatest pieces of music of any kind of music. And after being a session guy for so long and working with Mickey Most and so many different producers um, and playing on so many different records, he really understood the idea of tension and release. And that's what rock and roll is. It's tense, and then there's that release. And he did that sonically, and Robert did it emotionally, and uh, forget about it, you know. <laughs> so I love him, I always will. Yeah, and dynamics and all that good stuff that you have to have. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Michael, if people want to get in touch, well, one thing I was going to say is that you are extremely active on social media, which I love. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, Twitter, Instagram, um, Facebook, all of those uh, social uh, you know, media uh, platforms that I'm down with. Because it's very important, you see, because if I'm playing music every day, three hours a day, and I, you know, and people ask me, well, you know, how old was Bill Haley when he died? You know, or whatever it is, you know, I mean, whatever the question is, what was Jimmy Page like? You know, whatever the question. I try and answer as best as I can, because otherwise you're in this lofty position and not responding to people who want to, you know, who love what you do and, and want to go further. It would be crass and ridiculous for me not to respond. So uh, somehow it happened. And along with my sobriety and, and reading philosophies, uh, you know, and, and how to live your life, especially in these dangerous times, I can be of some help because I'm enthusiastic, because I'm exuberant about life. I'm 72 years old. You know, I wear the same trousers as I did when I was 19, which is a major achievement in anybody's book. No doubt. And, I, and you know, so there's a sense of fun and, and um, enjoy your fucking self, you know, I mean, and listen to rock and roll music. And I'd love to respond to people. And I've made tremendous relationships with people I've never met. If people want to buy the records or uh, go to your website, how can they best do that? Well, uh, Michael Debar dot bigcartel.com michaeldebar.bigcartel.com you can get autographed singles of Anarchy in the UK and Crackle and Hiss and all of the records I've made for Wicked Cool um, and my website michaeldebar.com and of course Wicked Cool Records which is Stephen's label which is what all my um, current music comes out on so that's the way you access you know what I do but you know go to my website you know and Twitter and Instagram and say hello please do Michael as always thank you so much for being on with us we really appreciate it Oh, Mark, it's my pleasure. Thank you, my friend, and good luck to you. And you're okay in your world. We're doing well. Yeah, yeah, we are. I'm so glad. Well, God bless all your listeners, and, and be safe, be kind, be cool, be courageous. MDB, over and out. For Michael DeBar, I'm Mark Scar on the Scar Card on 103.7 The Fox.